Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're going to be looking at a full breakdown of class 4 armour. Class 4 has become incredibly important in 12.12 given that basically all high tier armours have been removed from posting onto the flea market and this even includes some of the better class 4 rigs too. This means that most players will be using class 4 for longer than they would have normally, having to rely on trader rep to get the better armours rather than when their finances are up to speed and using the flea market. We'll be checking out the entire category of class 4 across the whole selection of different armours from the 6 v 5 Yule through to the trooper. First off, as with any Giga armour guide, the best place to start is to look at the overall protection first in the numbers to see which is theoretically the best armour at soaking up damage. As a quick refresher, to compare armours and rigs like for like, we need to think about the effective durability which is a concept that takes both the durability that you see in game and its material type into account to work out its overall practical durability. The destructibility table found on the ballistics page of the wiki lists how the different armour materials affect this, with lower destructibility being better. This is best thought of as a percentage, i.e. how much armour or durability damage does an armour take when hit with a round compared to some default. For example, ceramic armour takes 80% of this base damage, and UHMWPE, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, which we're going to call polymer from here on, only takes 45%. This is why a lower number is better for destructibility. From this, we can see that an armour made of polymer will be able to take many more hits before being zeroed than a ceramic armour as it takes a fraction of the durability damage on impact. To get effective durability, we divide the in-game durability that you see on the armour by its relevant destructibility number for its material to get an overall figure that is comparable between armours with different materials. When we do just this, the Highcom Trooper comes at the top with 189 effective durability, which is super high by the way across all armour classes, and the worst is the 6B13, which is the one that you see on scouts fairly often with an effective durability of 59, which is over three times lower than the Trooper. Here, the power of both the starting durability and the material is easy to see, and looking at the bottom three armours, these are all ceramic. Ceramic armours are typically the worst armours in Tarkov, as they have low durability and they repair badly, both on how much they repair versus their starting max durability, and also on cost. Within class 4 in general, most are rigs, with the trooper being somewhat an exception at the top of the table, so you don't need to get a separate rig as well for most of these armours. We'll look at the space that they give a bit later. Of the four that protect you best, three of them only cover the thorax hitbox. This used to be a relatively easy choice to make, as with the advent of the CMS and Surf 12 kits bringing the possibility to repair your stomach from zero, when high pen only was all the rage, having a black stomach was not as much of an issue versus a damaged thorax. Most players historically would have just preferred to take the rounds to the stomach unprotected to ensure maximum durability when protecting the chest, as you don't die outright with a black stomach like you do with the thorax. However, these days with the flesh damage buffs, magnum buckshot, the KS-23, double barrel shotgun, revolver shotty and leg meta weapons in general being fairly rampant, in CQB you really have to think hard about whether the stomach is worth protecting, bearing in mind a black stomach effectively makes rounds and pellets crit for 50% more damage, which can take you out very quickly given the sheer damage output of this type of ammo. If you're running longer range and playing generally around customs, woods or shoreline, then thorax only is still probably better overall when paired with a CMS kit. We've discussed in my other armour videos about other stats that matter being move speed, turn speed, ergonomics and weight, and there are some differences between the armours in class 4, but none of them are that critical so I'll leave you to have a look afterwards if you want to delve into the numbers specifically. The only one that I want to mention is the 6B3TM's negative 15% ergonomics hit, which is the worst of the lot and given I usually use this for budget, it matters a bit less than you'd think, but it is a consideration given it is quite a big penalty. Just before we continue, please allow me to take a moment to plug, yes, myself. First and foremost, I was lucky enough to be picked by BSG to have drops enabled on my Twitch channel on the 6th of January 2022, so if you're around, do pop in to say hi, I should be streaming for a good portion of the day. If you're a regular to the channel and you're looking for more content, or a newcomer but enjoy a different style of delivery too, make sure to check out our weekly Tarkov podcast, Scab Talk, that I run with my fellow Tarkov at Church. News, updates, strategy, theory crafting, give us a try, you might just enjoy it. Link down in the description to anchor fm forward slash scavtalk, we're available on all major podcast platforms as well as on our separate YouTube channel for the podcast itself. Alright, so let's move on to the all important topic of costs. There is no point being the best if it costs 10 times as much as the next best in slot. Starting at the top, the trooper is flea only and costs somewhere from 80 to 120k, although this fluctuates a lot. There is a general upward pressure on the trooper that isn't to do with the trooper at all really, which is that it's part of the slick barter on Ragman 4. 2 Kajura and 4 Aramid plus 2 Troopers makes the Trooper part a big input to this one when under 100k players usually hoover them up to get their slicks from the trader. This is less of a thing earlier in the wipe because so few people have access to Ragman 4 but it's good to bear in mind that this is a potential price impact. 
I knew that finding some of this information with lower trader levels might have been an issue when 1212 hit, so hoping that nothing's changed too much, I recorded all these armors with my end of wipe stack from 1211. I believe only some minor changes have been made, if anything, so these figures should all still be representative in 1212. Now, normally polymer is great for repairability, both on repairing close to max durability and also on cost. I was trying to find a zero durability trooper on the flea, but there were none for sale, so I can't show you the zero to full repair cost, but I was actually surprised how much this ended up being. A 60.7 out of 83.6 cost 22k to repair, and a 30.7 out of 85 cost almost 55k to repair. We can imply this would potentially cost about 85k to repair to full, which is quite a lot for this armour in my opinion. Fortunately, insurance costs are way lower at 23k, so they're quite efficient for insurance frauding and picking up someone else's kit. Lots of people really love the trooper, and early wipe it is quite tanky when facing rounds that struggle with class 4, i.e. worse than BT or M856A1 at 37 pen. The ideal situation when using it is facing rounds that can't pen until high durability damage has been dealt, because the trooper will last a very long time against these rounds. However, once the first month or two of the wiper out of the way, I'd rather pick up a cheaper level 5 armour instead and get protection for a whole tier of rounds higher. This is easier said than done now though, as class 5s have all been removed from the flea, so you'll need to get Suprapple 3 or Ragman 3 at least to grab a lower quality class 5 like the Courant. But just remember that even 762 PS, which you can buy right at the beginning very cheaply, has a 20% chance to pen versus class 4 at 100% durability, and BT and M856A1 have a 55% chance of penning on the very first hit. If the round pens, durability doesn't really matter anymore. Alright, so we spent a while on the trooper because it's at the top of the list, it's very popular, and it's introduced a few elements for the discussion, but we can speed up a little bit now. You used to see the Ars armour occasionally, varying on price with no direct trader purchase from 100k to 150k on the flea, however this armour is now banned for sale in the 1212 updates to the flea market. Ragman's barters at trader level 3 and 4 set it to around 150k at the moment, but like all barters, this will probably shift around. With second best effective durability and decent space, it's a good rig, just not sure I'd be paying 150,000 rubles for a class 4, similar to the trooper. 17 out of 80 durability version repairs to just under 70 max durability for 46,000 rubles, and it ensures the 28k. The AVS is another popular choice with no direct trader purchase, which again used to be up for about 150k for a new one, but is also banned on the fleet as of 1212. The barters here at Ragman 2 and 3 come to around 150k again. You're quite unlikely to do the two golden TTs and gold chains in raid from Rishala himself, so check the fleet to see if it makes sense for the pistols at the time. The AVS has great internal space and is one of the few rigs with two 2x2 two two slots, although personally I don't use the AVS too much because they are very efficient for our opponents to min-max our gear into their bags if we die, and let me tell you I die plenty enough. Outside of that though, they are good on both space and protection, with stomach protection being included which is not featured for the other top armours in class 4, and could be the factor that tips this into being the best overall for the category. You can repair a broken one to 60 versus a max of 70 for 49,000 rubles, although this being 85% of the original max durability is a bit of a bummer at this price, and they cost around 22k to insure, which is fairly cheap. The TV110 can be bought from Ragman 4 at 101k, which is actually a decent price, but at level 42, you're probably not running this armour anymore. This is also banned from the flea in 1212, however the barter of Ragman 3 is very good value. 4 bleaches and 2 shampoos comes out to around 75k currently, which is great for what you get here, but again, unfortunately, Ragman 3 is level 32, which is a bit out of reach for lots of players at this point. Made of the steel material, it repairs extremely well, with a 44 out of 85 returning to nearly max durability for 30k, so probably around 60k for a full repair. It ensures for 24,000 rubles, and the internal space is also very similar to the AVS, which is a big plus despite the insurance issue when you die. With three 3x1 slots, you can also run 40 round mags, which is not possible most of the time with other armours and rigs. Next up, the CQC Osprey. This is a British rig, so I guess I'm supposed to like this thing, but with thorax and arms, but no stomach protection, it's a bit of an odd one in the Tarkov meta. It's sold by Peacekeeper 3 at 180,000 rubles equivalent, which is an insane price for what you get, although aluminium repairs relatively well, costing 24,000 rubles to repair from half to 55 durability out of 60 max, with a slightly higher insurance price of 32,000 rubles. Its internal layout is decent with one 2x2, two two, but given its average durability, strange hitboxes and expensive price tag, it's a no from me. The two ANA tactical rigs, the M1 and the M2, do differ in a few ways. The M2 is more protective, being a titanium rig, it has thorax and stomach protection as well, as does every other rig that we're going to talk about from here, barring the new MMAC rig. New ones are about 90k on the fleet at full durability. The barter for the three round frame glasses and three cold pack visors at Ragman 3 is a bit strange, but visors are usually around 11,000 rubles. 
However, there's a Ragman visor bar to themselves for chainlets which are going for 6k, so you can in theory get 3 of these for about 18,000 total. Round glasses used to be more expensive than they are now because they were part of the recently removed hex grid barter, but are now only for this one, so are now only 10 to 15,000 per pair. In theory, at the right timing, you could get this barter done for 50k total and possibly even less, which is awesome. A Ragman 4, 10 level 20 dog tags are about 75k, so this doesn't work at the moment in comparison, but it might later in the wipe if barter items increase in price. Just be aware that as you use higher level tags than 20, the cost becomes implicitly higher, the therapist buys them for progressively more, which is what you're losing out on selling them to her rather than using them for the trade. A full repair from zero costs 47k and gets to about 55 durability out of a max of 60, and it ensures for 18,000 rubles, which is actually really low. At 4x4, it's the biggest rig that we've seen so far in terms of the physical space it takes in a backpack, and with no 2x2 slot, it's actually a tough ask for people to take it out. It nearly fills an entire Burkut bag, and you can't take it in a tri-zip with another 3x4 item, so people will often leave this, given you only get two extra slots versus its physical size in a bag. An insurance boomerang, if there ever was one. With the 5th best protection in this list, one of the lowest weights at 7 kilos and fairly low debuff stats, alongside the really cheap barter at Ragman 3, once you get there, this one gets the Giga Seal of approval, and I would strongly consider using this for certain budget runs myself after doing this research. The M1 on the other hand is about 120 to 140,000 rubles on the flea, which I think is probably to do with the internal space, but I'm not 100% sure. It has a barter at Ragman 3 for 4 Aquamari and 1 Kvass, which used to be great, but early wipe Aquamaris are about 25 to 30k each, so the barter ends up being around the same as the flea price. The M1 rig uses steel instead as its material, so it costs 48k to repair fully to get back to nearly max durability, and insurance costs 21,000. However, note here for both the M1 and the M2, once Aquamari prices come down anyway, insurance and repairs together can cost more than a new one, so you have to be insurance fraud upgrading your armour when it's not very damaged to make this better than just buying fresh ones all the time. The M1 has a slightly better internal configuration, as I mentioned, with two 2x2 slots and two extra spaces overall versus the M2. But with lower durability and slightly worse stats overall, I'd still pick the M2 if given a choice between them outside of the large price difference at the moment. However, the M1 can be a good option if the M2 barter becomes more expensive for whatever reason. Next up, there were two new rigs that were added to the game during the Santa in Tarkov Christmas event in December 2021, the Eagle Industries MMAC Plate Carrier and the First Spear Strandhog Carrier. These are the next two in performance underneath the ANA rigs, with 89 and 75 effective durability respectively. As you can see, the MMAC is better, but barters from Ragman 2, with one sewing kit and a ripstop. The Strandhog is on Ragman 3, but requires four sewing kits and two Kajura. I expect this to be changed eventually, because it doesn't make any sense to be honest, and given sewing kits are about 37k right now, that makes the MMAC about 60k for the barter, which is really good, and the Strandhog about 170k, which is really bad. The one major difference between them is the MMAC only protects the thorax, but given the price, the MMAC is actually a really good pickup if you only have Ragman 2. In terms of the layout, the Strandhog is better with three 3x1 slots and a 2x2, but I don't think it's worth the cost. I don't have any broken armors yet to check the repair rate, but with the MMAC using polymer, this repairs super well and cheaply too usually, so should be great for that. The Strandhog should also repair well with the aluminium material, but I don't actually have one yet, so I can't check the insurance cost for the time being. And here we are, onto the 6B3TM. A level 2 Ragman, this rig is a staple of many a new intermediate and even expert players for its easy 55k purchase price and baseline class 4 protection. There is a good reason it is called the Rat Rig. Given many of the good barters we've discussed already at Ragman 3 or 4, the fact that you get access to this at Ragman 2, and for cash, potentially at level 17 if you have the trader rep, means this is one of the first class 4 rigs that is easily accessible for most players that is cost effective. There is a barter to exchange 4 of these for a new one, which you only really use if you run them non-stop and have some with low durability. Even then, it's probably more cost effective to sell them to fence and buy a new one than to try and combine 4 rubbish ones into one new one. Repair these from zero is 24,000 rubles, which gets back to about 36 out of 40, and they're only 12k on insurance, which is really cheap. The internal space is very average, matching the size of the rig, but given how cheap they are overall, you almost always get these back and can run them once or twice for low end raids after repairs. As we can see from my table, the durability is not amazing, but it's also not the worst, however, it's definitely in the lower end. For 10 to 15k more, we can get nearly 50% extra durability from the M2 rig, and we don't suffer the minus 15% ergo penalty either that I mentioned earlier, as it's only 2% on the M2. Is it worth it instead? Well, maybe. Before we decide, let's finish off the last couple. The NFM Thor is available at Ragman 3 for 57k, or 65k from the flea. It costs 12k to repair, and 13k to insure. 
It's a vest, so you need a separate rig, but protection-wise it's very similar to the 6B3TM with lower debuffs. If this was Ragman 2, it would be more of a contender, and Ragman 3, not so much. Finally, we have the three ceramic armors, the 6B23-2, the 6B5 Ulay, and the 6B13. The 6B23-2 is a Ragman 3 purchase, again, why, for 76k, or the flea for 70ish, repairs like total crap for 14,000, and insures for 18k. The Ulay is about 45k on the flea, and has a barter for soap and toilet paper that is also around 45,000 rubles, or you can do another 3 for 1 trade in with old broken versions. It costs 22k to repair poorly and 15k to insure, and has a small space inside as it's also a rig. Lastly, the 6B13 vest is the one that you see on scavs, has the lowest overall durability and costs 67,000 rubles from Ragman 2. It's about 50 to 70k on the flea new, costs 14k to repair to a low level and insures for 16,000 rubles. There's basically no redeeming feature of these bottom three, and I pretty much advise against using them altogether unless you have them already, they are your only class 4 rigs, you can't get the 6B3TM because it's sold out, you do have the barter with Jaeger, they are 100% durability, and you do a raid where you don't really care about dying. So overall, what's the best bang for your buck in class 4? Personally, I'm really impressed with the M2 primarily, but also the M1's potential later once the barter comes down in price when Aquamari stabilise and the stats that they both have. If you can get to Ragman 3, the M2 for 45 to 50,000 rubles is a crazy good deal. Given that they both cover thorax and stomach as well, they're great for CQB too. The TV110 at 75k with the barter is also decent value for thorax only if you value the extensive rig space and high repairability, although for me it's getting dangerously close to upgrade to class 5 territory. If you don't have Ragman 3, I would advise checking the price and availability of the new MMAC rig first and go with the 6B3TM if it's over 60k or not available at the time. I use this early wipe extensively, and if you just want some simple bare bones class 4 protection, either will work. Just remember that there are a few readily available rounds that players can use pretty early on, like M80, which will sail straight through whichever class 4 you use, which is why I try not to invest in it too too much. Both of these rigs are cheap, and they will get the job done. As mentioned, please do check out our podcast Scav Talk, where we talk about all of these kinds of things and more in a relaxed format once a week, and if you learned something in today's video, as always consider dropping a like or a comment to help out the channel. I also stream on Twitch, usually on a Saturday, but you can keep up to date with my movements on Twitter or come chat to me in our Discord. With all that said, I'll see you next time, and as always, have fun in your raids.